Daily Minutes nummer 1593 met een uitzending voor vandaag 13 april 2019. Dus het bulletin van zaterdag. Several parts of this broadcast will be in English. De vorige Daily Minutes was op 6 april. Vandaag een week. Nou, dat doen we even over. De, de vorige Daily Minutes was op 16 april. Vandaag precies een week geleden. Dat is de langste pauze in het bestaan van de Daily Minutes. Nou, zoals het duidelijk zal zijn, ik worstel momenteel tijdelijk een beetje met mijn gezondheid. Het is niets ernstigs. Ik neem gewoonlijk nogal veel hooi op mijn vork. Dat is nooit te veel, maar ik houd er vaak geen rekening mee dat ik sinds mijn tienerjaren af en toe gezondheidsproblemen heb, waardoor het op die momenten dat ik daar hinder van heb ineens wel te veel is. Met name als dat zoals nu wat langer aanhoudt. Vaak heb ik zoals nu ook het geval was te laat in de gaten dat ik een tandje minder moet doen. Ik heb in de tussenliggende periode vooral geconcentreerd op mijn betaalde werk, waar ik wel een redelijk deel van kon blijven doen. Vorige week, dat wil zeggen voor het weekend van 6 en 7 april, ging het allemaal weer flink vooruit. Alleen had ik wel moeite om ook Slow Scan Radio er nog bij te doen, vooral omdat dat ook een heel ambitieuze uitzending was. Momenteel gaat het na ruim drie weken weer wat de goede richting op. Omdat het zo lang duurt, moet ik het de komende weken vermoedelijk echter nog wel rustig aan blijven doen. Het vervelende is dat er momenteel ook wat apparatuur is stuk gegaan die ik zelf zou moeten repareren. Omdat ik het zelf gemaakt heb, onder andere zijn er wat mankementen aan mijn repeater PI3XTV. Een van de dingen die erg veel tijd kost, ik noemde ze al, en die veel stress opleveren, dat is het maken van Slow Scan Radio. Uh, die uitzending heb ik een poosje in het weekend kunnen maken, maar momenteel werk ik ook vaak in het weekend uh, voor vertaalwerken. En heb ik de resterende uren nodig om bij te komen. Vervolgens komt die uitzending dan op woensdag of donderdag aan de beurt, waar het samen met mijn reguliere planning echt problemen oplevert. Ik kan daarom niet anders dan die uitzending in elk geval de komende weken stopzetten en dat is per vandaag al gebeurd. Ik ga me die tijd beraden of ik de Slow Scan Radio die per week tussen de 4 en de 6 uur kost om te maken nog wel voort kan zetten. Ik ben op het lange van plan om de Daily Minutes wat anders op te gaan zetten. Ik wil daar langzaam van de Daily Minutes weer een podcast gaan maken. Uh, ook een beetje de podcast stijl opnieuw in te voeren. Um, ja, zo ben ik er ook mee begonnen als podcast in, nou, wat zal het zijn, in 2011 geloof ik al. De naam stamt ook uit die tijd trouwens. Momenteel ligt de nadruk met name op het tijdstip van 7 uur en dat wil ik eigenlijk wel zo houden. Voorlopig blijft de uitzending ook gewoon op dmr.li. Maar ik wil gaandeweg naartoe dat de uitzending rond 7 uur tevens op mijn podcast beschikbaar is. Ik heb daarnaast ook een nieuw plan voor een podcast. Dat is echt een podcast die niet iedere week terugkomt, maar op onregelmatige tijden gaat verschijnen. Het is niet duidelijk of die podcast in het Engels gaat verschijnen, in het Nederlands. Of misschien wel in een combinatie daarvan, of in twee versies. Twee versies is vast daarvoor te hoog gegrepen, ook gezien dat ik nu al wat te hard doe. Het zou kunnen dat ik die podcast ook weer op de korte golf wil brengen, met name als ik die in het Engels ga doen. Waarschijnlijk wordt de naam van de podcast DM Podcast. DM is kort voor Daily Minutes. Die naam die heb ik daarvoor al vaker gebruikt. En ik heb ook een domeinnaam dmpodcast.net. Het wordt iets heel anders dan de Daily Minutes. In eerste instantie denk ik dat de nieuwe podcast geheel over de zendhobby zal gaan. Maar geleidelijk aan wil ik daar ook een aantal andere onderwerpen bij betrekken. Uh, in, meer info hierover volgt nog, want het is ook nog niet helemaal uitgekristalliseerd. Um, Tenminste, als er schot in de zaak zit, vanwege de al aangekondigde rust, kan het ook best nog een poosje duren voordat ik daar wat aan ga doen. Ik zie dat ik de microfoon af en toe wat overstuur, dat is niet de bedoeling. Het zal vast wat kraakproblemen opleveren. Um, ja, ik denk dat ik de komende week gaandeweg de Daily Minutes weer ga oppakken. Dat zal eigenlijk vanaf maandag waarschijnlijk wel lukken. En dan verder met de nog resterende delen over repeatertechniek, plus nieuwe onderwerpen in de serie over antennes. Ik denk dat ik voorlopig de data en de SSTV even laat zitten. Misschien dat ik nog wel de teksten met amateurnieuws kan uitzenden. Omdat dat heel erg weinig werk extra is. Dat zou in de loop van de volgende week dan kunnen gebeuren. Uh, gaan we nu verder met het RCB nieuws. En die is al beschikbaar in de versie van TX Factor. Daarna is er nog de column van Onno. Dat is die van vorige week. Omdat die nog niet in de uitzending geweest is. Morgen is de column van Onno van uh, deze week. Hallo, dit is Mike Marsh, G1i AR, en welkom to the TX News podcast of the GB2RS National News for Sunday, the 14th of April 2019, supplied by the Radio Society of Great Britain and brought to you by TX Factor. The news headlines this week: Artistic SSTV from Iceland, MLNS sponsors Radio Caroline, and GB2RS manager Ken Hatton, Golf 3 Victor, Bravo Alpha, Simon Key. 
Until the 29th of April, as part of an art installation in Iceland by Lucy Helton, Kilo Delta 2, Mike Foxtrot Victor, SSTV images will be transmitted by Tango Foxtrot 3, Juliet Alpha. The images, appropriated from the Reykjavik Museum of Photography's collection, are of Icelandic glaciers photographed many years ago. Amateur radio operators who receive these transmissions are being asked to print out the images received and post them back to Lucy using instructions on the website at lucyhelton.com. In exchange, when she's assembled the printed pieces to reconstruct the whole image transmitted, QSLs of the completed images will be sent back to the participating amateurs. Each single transmission consists of 12 SSTV images and five different Glacier images will be transmitted over 15 days. Look for USB signals on 14.230 MHz at 1300, 1800 and 2300 UTC. Over the Easter weekend of the 18th to the 21st of April, Martin Lynch of MLNS is sponsoring broadcasts transmitted from Radio Caroline in memory of his old employee, Graham Platts, Golf 4 X-Ray Oscar Foxtrot, who passed away last November due to cancer. One of Graham's last bucket list visits was to the ship itself, arranged by Martin. The history of Radio Caroline is an interesting one, being one of the most famous pirate radio stations in the 1960s. There are several radio amateurs on the ship, and the full history can be seen on their website. You can tune in on 648 kHz AM, or you can check out the website at radiocaroline.co.uk. Sad news now, as mentioned earlier, Ken Hatton, Golf 3, Victor Bravo Alpha, the GB2RS news manager, became silent key at the end of last week. He was appointed as GB2RS manager on the 1st of January 2014, taking over from Gordon Adams, Golf 3 Lima Echo Quebec, and Ken will be sadly missed by all who knew him. The National Museum of Computing at Bletchley Park will be holding its first ever electro jumble sale on Sunday the 21st of April. Over the years they've accumulated many pieces of electronic apparatus and components that are now surplus to requirements. Items for sale will include test equipment, military items, domestic radios, telecommunication equipment and vintage components. And all the details can be found online at tnmoc.org. The IARUMS Region 1 newsletter for March 2019 is now available at IARU-Region1.org. The monitoring system report includes details of intruders on the amateur bands from Richard, Golf 4 Delta Yankee Alpha, the intruder watch coordinator who runs the RSGB monitoring system. GB2 Day, GB2 Delta Alpha Yankee is on the air for its final day on Sunday the 14th to promote the opening of the teleprinter building at Bletchley Park, which houses a fantastic D-Day exhibition entitled Interception, Intelligence and Invasion. The new exhibition is open as part of the general admission to Bletchley Park Museum located near Milton Keynes. Now RSGB members can gain free access to Bletchley Park and the National Radio Centre by downloading and printing a voucher from the RSGB website. Head over to rsgb.org slash Bletchley Voucher for all the instructions. The RSGB has released a vintage silent black and white video of an amateur radio direction finding field day. The video called DF Field Day North of the Thames, May 18th, 1947, was filmed at Chipping Barnet. And it's been added to the many amateur radio videos that can be viewed on the Society's YouTube channel. So that's your headline news for the week. Now it's time to look at details and rallies coming up for the coming week. We've been asked to clarify definitively that the Andover rally is on the 28th of April and not the 18th of April, as has been reported incorrectly by some non-RSGB sources. 
So, Sunday the 14th, it's the West London Radio and Electronics Show. It takes place at Kempton Park Racecourse on the Staines Road East in Sunbury on Thames. Postcode is Tango Whiskey 165 Alpha Quebec. There will be a talk in station on the air. Car parking is free. Doors open at 10 in the morning with disabled visitors gaining access 10 minutes earlier. There'll be trade stands and a bring and buy, as well as special interest groups and lectures. Catering is available on site. And if you'd like some more details, to get in touch with Paul, Mike Zero, Charlie, Juliet X Ray on 08451 650 351. Also on Sunday the 14th, the Hack Green Bunker Rally will be held at the Hack Green Secret Nuclear Bunker on French Lane, Hack Green near Nantwich, Baddington in Cheshire. And the postcode is Charlie Whiskey 58 Alpha Lima. It's a sale of electronic equipment, amateur gear, components, military radio items and vehicle spares. Doors open at 10 in the morning and there's refreshments available on site. If you'd like some more information, get in touch with this anonymous person on this telephone phone number on 01270 623 I'm sure somebody will pick the phone up. The Ripon Radio Rally, also on the 14th, will take place at the Hugh Ripley Hall in Ripon. Postcode is Hotel Golf 4 to Papatango. Doors open at 10 in the morning and refreshments are available on site with information and a table booking form all up online at ripon.org. UK. Now, there's no rallies in the diary for the upcoming Easter weekend, and the next ones are on the 28th at Blackpool and Andover. And don't forget to get your event into Radcom, onto GB2RS, and on the RSGB website. Please send your details as early as you possibly can to radcom at rsgb.org.uk. And we need to know about four months in advance for the Radcom magazine. Moving on to the DX News now, which comes from 425 DX News and other sources. Mart Delta Lima 6 Uniform Alpha Alpha will be on the air as Oscar Hotel Zero Uniform Alpha from the Aland Islands, IOTA reference Echo Uniform 002, until the 19th of April. He'll operate on CW and digital and QSLs go via his home call sign. Chris, Victor Kilo 3, Foxtrot Yankee and Dindo... Delta Uniform 1, Uniform Delta, will be active as 4 Echo 8 Tango from Tawi Tawi Island, which is Oscar Charlie 174, from the 19th to the 23rd of April. They will be operating CW, SSB, FT8 on the 40 to 20 metre bands. And if you get a contact, QSR via Mike Zero Oscar X-Ray Oscars OQRS. Everett Papa Alpha 2 Kilo Whiskey will be active as 5 Tango 2 Kilo Whiskey from Nuadibu in Mauritania until the 19th of April. Operating as a guest at the QTH of 5 Tango 5 Papa Alpha, he'll be using CW and maybe some SSB as well. QSL via Club Logs OQRS, that's preferred, and Logbook of the World. There will be some IOTA activity from Djibouti in the coming weeks. Christian Echo Alpha 3 November Tango, along with Mike Mike Zero November Delta X-Ray and Mike Mike Zero Oscar Kilo Golf, will be travelling to the Sept Frères Island, which is IOTA reference Alpha Foxtrot 059. They hope to be on the island from the 16th to the 18th of April using the call sign Juliet 20 Delta X-Ray. This will be followed by activity from Mucha Island, which is IOTA reference Alpha Foxtrot 053 on the 18th and the 19th of April, signing Juliet 20 Delta X ray portable. Dates may vary though due to local conditions. Moving on to the special events news now. A special event station to commemorate the Battle of Culloden will be on the air on the 16th and 17th of April from the Highland Astronomical Society, Culloden Battlefield on Culloden Moor in Inverness, where the postcode is India Victor 2, 5 Echo Uniform. Using the call sign Golf Bravo 0 BOC, the station will be on the air from 9 in the morning till 8 in the evening. Golf Bravo Zero, Golf Kilo Alpha, operated by Tony, Golf 3 Juliet Romeo Juliet, and Golf Bravo Zero, Golf Kilo Bravo, operated by Larry, Golf 4 Hotel Lima November, will be representing the Portishead Radio during this year's Maritime Radio Day. The event will run from 1200 UTC on the 14th of April until 2200 UTC on the 15th. Special call signs for Zulu 64 Euro, 4 X-ray 64 Sierra, 4 X-ray 64 
Oscar, 4 X-Ray 6 for November and 4 X-Ray 6 for Golf will be active from the 18th of April to the 18th of May for the 64th Eurovision Song Contest, which will take place in Tel Aviv in Israel between the 14th and the 18th of May. QSLs via Logbook of the World and EQSL certificates will be available for download and see 4 Zulu 6 for Euro on qrz.com for all the rules don't forget to send in your special event details to radcom at rsgb.org.uk as early as you possibly can for free publicity on gb2rs in radcom and online and do remember that uk special event call signs stations must be open to the public so our free publicity can help make your efforts more widely known Let's check out the contest news now. And Sunday the 14th, it's the first 50 megahertz contest taking place from 0900 to 1200 UTC. Using all modes, the exchange's signal report, serial number, locator and postcode. Also on the 14th, the Worked All Britain data contest runs 1000 to 2200 UTC. Using the 3.5 to 14 megahertz contest bands, the exchange's signal report, serial number and WAB number. On Tuesday, the 1.3 GHz UK Activity Contest runs 1900 through 2130 using all modes on the 23cm band, the exchange's signal report, serial number and locator. And on Thursday, the 70 MHz UK Activity Contest runs 1900 through 2130 using all modes, the exchange's signal report, serial number and locator. And finally, in contests, next weekend, the first machine-generated mode contest runs runs from 1400 on the 20th to 1400 on the 21st. Using MGM on the 50 and the 144 megahertz band, the exchange is signal report and your four character locator. Wrapping up the main news now, it's the radio propagation report compiled this week by Golf Zero Kilo Yankee Alpha, Golf 3 Yankee Lima Alpha and Golf 4 Delta Delta Kilo on Friday the 12th of April. It's been a difficult time for HF. The solar wind has remained active and the BZ component exhibited several periods of prolonged southward deflection, making it more easily coupled with the Earth's magnetic field. Solar wind speed ranged from mostly 425 to 475 kilometers per second, and this was enough to keep the KP index elevated often to 4. The net result was that conditions were pretty rotten with even 14 megahertz struggling to open at times however the solar flux did increase to 78 thanks to the return of sunspot number 2738 and this is large but appears to be only producing very minor b-class flares an isolated c-class flare might also be possible next week should be more settled geomagnetically with a maximum kp index of two and a solar flux of around 74 if the solar wind drops we may expect fair hf conditions next week the current solar cycle has a peak average of 82 sunspots the solar cycle 25 prediction panel experts have just said the next may have a slow start but it's anticipated to peak with solar maximum occurring between 2023 and 2026 with a sunspot range of between 95 and 130. This is well below the average number of sunspots which typically ranges from 140 to 220 sunspots per solar cycle. Now the VHF and upwards news it seems that high pressure remains firmly in control to the north of Britain and over Scandinavia for much of the coming week. Now this would normally mean that Tropo should get a mention, certainly for eastern areas, but the air mass is fairly dry and therefore not ideal for producing the required change in refractive index needed for Tropo. In the south and the west there will be some spells of rain and possibility of rain scatter, but it will also be rather windy at times. There should be a trend later next week for a more moist and warmer flow to cross the North Sea and this could introduce extensive misty low cloud along the east coast. Now this is exactly what's needed for better tropo prospects in eastern areas. We're rapidly approaching the sporadic E season and should see a start to some paths on 10 metres and possibly 6 metres opening up within Europe. It's worth checking the clusters and beacons for band activity. Digital modes like FT8 will benefit first, but it's possible that SSB and CW will start to show in the second half of the month. 
The typical early paths are often out to the eastern Mediterranean and over the Pyrenees, usually just out of reach from the UK, but a good sign should they occur. Although the Lyrids meteor shower does not peak until next week, the first indications of the shower will begin to be noticed around the 16th of April, probably with a gradual increase in the number of meteors encountered growing during the forthcoming week. Don't expect great things this week, but do keep an eye on Oscar November 4 Kilo Sierra Tango chat for reports of meteor burst. Better still, keep listening to one of the more distant 6-metre, 4-metre or 2-metre beacons for the occasional ping. As the moon declination decreases during the week, 144 MHz moon background sky noise gradually increases. However, path degradation is low due to the moon's closest approach, or perigee, on the 17th. Liberation is also low on the 17th, and this will help 1296 MHz EME as CW characters will be less chopped up. And the 17th would probably be a good day to try EME. That's it from the propagation team for another week. And that is it. That was your GB2RS national news for the UK from around the world this week. Regional GB2RS news will be on the air over the weekend. All you've got to do is track down your local newsreader who will be reading it for you. If you don't know who's doing that, head over to the TX Factor homepage at txfactor.co.uk. We've got a PDF file up there on the GB2RS news tab. If you click on that, you'll be able to download a big, big list of all the newsreaders up and down the country, what frequency they broadcast on and what time they are on the air. I'm Mike Marsh, G1IAR, reporting with the TX News weekly podcast of GBTRS. Thanks for listening. We will be back here next week, same time, same place, with the very latest update of GBTRS News. Foundations of Amateur Radio. When you get your amateur radio licence, you become part of a select group of humans who are required to notify authorities if you happen to hear an emergency transmission. Not only that, you're required to offer assistance. The regulator in Australia, the ACMA, says this about it. When a distress call is heard, you must immediately cease all transmissions. You must continue to listen on frequency. You must record full details of the distress message in writing and, if possible, recorded by tape recorder. You must also wait for a short time to see if the message is heard by a station better placed to help. If the distress message is not acknowledged within a reasonable time, the amateur is obliged to assist. The regulator goes on to say that after acknowledging or attempting to acknowledge receipt of the distress message, you should immediately forward details of the distress situation to the nearest police station for land-based distress situations or the Australian Maritime Safety Authority for air or sea-based distress situations. In the United States, the ARRL uses the word may rather than must, but essentially says the same thing. The FCC, the US regulator, says that an amateur station is not restricted by any rules to attract attention in the case of distress, nor is there any restriction on assisting a station in distress. In the UK, the regulator specifies that instead of waiting for a reasonable time, you must wait for three minutes for a coast station to reply before responding. Interestingly, getting information on how to respond, what you must and must not do, is hard to come by. This in itself is a cause for concern, but let's move on. Using the Australian example and requirements, how prepared are you to do this? Could you actually record the information? Do you have a pen and paper next to your radio and can at short notice dig up a tape recorder or presumably some more modern recording device capable of recording audio from your station? Do you have the contact details for search and rescue at hand and are you actually prepared for such activities? During the week, an amateur in Australia reported that they heard a distress signal five hours after the event. While they were at work, their station recorded off-air and they listened to the recording after returning home. Using social media, they asked the question, should they report this information to authorities? The answer is yes. Not only should they, in this case, given they are in Australia, they must. There was no evidence that any other station heard the distress signal. In fact, the evidence was that the other stations continued to transmit on frequency, either completely deaf or engaged in more pressing activities like hunting for a contact. 
I will note that propagation is a fickle beast, and it's possible, though improbable, that the other stations on frequency didn't hear the distress call, even though it was repeated. For that reason alone, you should never assume that someone else will deal with it, and as I said in Australia, you don't get the option. You're required to. A couple of other things came to light for that amateur this week. Their recording was in a format that was hard to process by normal audio processing software. In this case, the recording was made as an IQ recording. We should look at that some other time. But processing the file was non-trivial and valuable time was lost in uploading a huge file and for others to download it for confirmation. There was also indecision about reporting the call to authorities, and if so, to which ones. I will say that while we don't know the outcome of the distress signal, we do know that it was reported and that, at this point, is exactly what is required. The chances that you'll hear a distress signal in your life are tiny. But, if it happens, are you ready for it? I know I have some work to do. I'm on a Victor Kilo 6, Foxtrot Lima Alpha Bravo. Deze mensen zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x xdvme Dat is ook te vinden rechts boven aan de webpagina van de uitzending www.pa0ete.nl. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. De internetfaciliteiten en studio hardware voor Daily Minutes worden gesponsord door 70 megahertzshop.nl. 70 mhzshop.nl. Whoever hears this is crazy. En microfoon naar retour.